All right. And we've got a do another donation for $500 from CK and the 30XX team who say, much love for GDQ staff, runners, and crew for making this an amazing event happening smoothly during a bumpy year. For great justice. Welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2020 Online. Up next, we have Demonic Robots speedrunning We Happy Few. All right. Uh, what is going on, everyone? My name is Demonic Robots. I am speedrunning We Happy Few. Uh, we're going to be doing one of the DLC specifically. Um, I'm joined by my couch, Eggdices and Waifu. So thank you guys for joining me. How's it going? So most people actually don't know a whole lot about this game outside of the uh, original Kickstarter campaign for it. The main game is a survival horror game, but not in the sense of like Resident Evil or Silent Hill. It's more of a open world game that's a survival elements with horror themes. So there's crafting, there's a food meter, a thirst meter, all of that good stuff. We're not going to be doing any of that. We're going to be doing one of the DLC, specifically the last one in the series, We All Fall Down, and that is going to follow the story of Victoria Bing. Uh, Victoria Bing is actually a character that has a connection with a lot of the main characters in the original game. Um, she's Arthur's boss. Uh, she, we're going to run into some things with Sally and Ollie Stargy is actually the person who forced her off her joy. Now, what is joy? Joy is a drug in this dystopian-themed Orwellian society where it makes them really happy and hallucinate. Problem is, it makes you forget everything and you lose your memories. It's a really bad drug. Don't don't try it, despite the name. Um, we're going to be starting time here in just a moment. It's going to be when I skip this upcoming cutscene, so we're going to get into it right about now. So... If you've ever played Dishonored or Mirror's Edge, this is going to look a little bit familiar. This is kind of where it's taken the inspiration from. There's three DLCs, and every single one of them has a different item. Also, there is kind of a graphic warning here. There's some vomit. It's not super, you know, big, but if that kind of makes you queasy, uh, give it the first two minutes, and then we should be good to go. But um, in They Came From Below, you get a ray gun slash baton melee weapon. In Light Bearer, which is the second DLC, you get a super groovy guitar. And then here, we're going to be using a whip. The whip is used for two things. It's used for uh, navigating the world and traversing, and it's also your main weapon. So that is going to be how we're going to be fighting there, guys. We're also going to get a dart gun, stun gun kind of thing later on, but that is uh, past this area. Um, the main movement here is going to be uh, basically hold W, also another graphic warning. But we're going to come up here. So Victoria was forced off of her joy by Ollie Starkey, and this has some really bad withdrawal effects. She comes over here, and it, she says that she's about to take the drug again. However, she decides against it, and she kind of realizes that, hey, everybody is starving to death, and we need to do something about that, because that is not good. And um, in this society, if you don't take your joy, um, they're not really too happy around you. But we got a bit of parkour coming up right here. We're going to be introduced to the first main mechanic is that whenever you see those yellow coils, that is going to be our main movement mechanic. Also, because she was on her drug joy for so long, she's actually going to be experiencing some hallucinations, hallucinations involving her mother. Um, so that's what that was right here. We're also going to try and get a jump that gets us to this window so we can get through it immediately. But right now, this upcoming cutscene, we're going to be uh, meeting up with her father, who is uh, the general and a more prominent character. Um, in the speedrun, we don't talk to him, but essentially, he's going to tell us to go to uh, Dr. Verlonk, who is actually the person who creates all of the joy for the city. And um, we're going to be going to his facility, and we're going to tell him, like, hey, everybody's starving to death. We need to do something about it. So that's what Victoria is going to be attempting to do. She's basically uh, Batman. She's, you know, she's, she's not the hero that they need or that they want, but it's the hero they need. So we're going to come up here. We have a couple of cutscene skips, and not a whole lot goes in this little area outside of story reasons. And because we're trying to go fast, we're not going to watch these cutscenes. Uh, so we're gonna hold that cutscene skip is also very weird I actually wait there for about a second because if you attempt to skip that cutscene too early It actually doesn't work. Also, these TVs will shock us if they realize that we're not on joy um, Sometimes they'll hit you there. Sometimes they won't we actually wanted to get hit there because we need to do something That's a death work coming up right here. So we're gonna try and do this jump right here There we go. Is that little meter in the middle like a stamina meter? You have to manage that to make sure you yes. don't go too slow Exactly. So it's tied to a couple of things. It's tied to jumping, sprinting. Whoops, we missed that. That's okay. It's one of the toughest jumps in the game. Yeah, it's a little bit awkward too because yeah, sometimes the yeah, 
Victoria is sometimes good at jumping, but sometimes the hitboxes are the problems. Oh, I'm just missing it left and right here. It only uh, skips a couple of seconds here. Let's see here. All right. Oh, whoops. All right. <laughs> Essentially, with this jump, though, it's very precise that you have to, like, jump right when she's about to fall off, and then you have to make sure you turn so you can actually grab the right. uh, rail kind of on the corner there. Can I get one hard. more try? All right. So normally you're supposed to catch on to that. We're just going to go do the, uh, the, not, the, you know, the slow strat, but that's fine. We actually come out here. We do get a little bit of a jump right here. We get to use more of the coil, which is fun. But yeah, normally you catch right there and then you do this all nice jump and then you're all good to go. We're going to grab our first thing here. That's a contraption. So the contraptions are actually upgrades. These upgrades are going to allow us to basically do the main primary fight in the game really, really fast because everything is tied to the stamina meter like Waifu was asking about. It's tied to jumping. It's tied to sprinting. It's tied to attacking. And we want to have as much of it as we can. I'm also going to grab another contraption here. Normally, we don't grab that one, but I want the healing bombs that are right next to it. And they're just right there. Um, we also, in this part of the fight, uh, normally we actually don't fight these enemies. However, because they can kill you, normally what you want to do is just run up to the wheel, open it up, and do that. I'm also going to let him hit me at least once. That's going to get me down a little bit. Normally, you just walk up right here and you rotate the wheel. However, that's kind of dangerous, so we're not going to do it because of marathon safety. Um, Dicey's, would you like to explain this upcoming uh, death warp that we're going to be doing here? Uh, sure, uh, but first I do love this jump right here that you end up doing where you kind of just pop on the side to be able to go on the roof here. But the yeah, it's coming... technically an out of bounds, but yeah. not exactly. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fun one. Uh, but for the death warp though, what's going to happen is he got his health a bit lower earlier because there's going to be a section where you need to fight off um, pretty much the bobbies, which are like the police in this game, and as well any citizens who know you're off your joy and don't like you after you walk through that joy detection meter, which all has all the lights. However, we found that if you just die, everyone deagros uh, once you load back in, and it's faster than actually fighting off everyone. So it's actually faster to just get beat up by rolling pins and electricity and to get the really sad uh, article saying you went on vacation as opposed to actually fighting because when you get back you can just run to the exit yeah and unfortunately turning off the joy detector is way way slower so we just come right here we get a little bit more health but now we are at the joy facility so we're going to be making our way through. And as you can see, everyone's okay with us right now. Um, again, memory is a very common theme in this game. So the fact that uh, everyone kind of just forgets that, hey, you know, she's kind of a bad guy now in our society. It's, it's, it's a joy. pretty on topic. Yeah, exactly. They just beat you up. They forget five minutes later. They're all happy about it. Oh, so that's actually like a gameplay mechanic. Like that's intense. Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. We've still got the upper hand, lads. So right now we're actually coming in here and we're going to help the bombies. We need to get to Tony Verlong, but the facility is currently on, whoops. The facility is currently on lockdown. The reason for this is because, let's hit through here, there we go. If, that, if you hit that steam, it kind of knocks you away. Um, it's on lockdown because the workers are essentially rioting. They want back Sally Boyle, who was a former employee and also one of the main characters from the actual game itself. Um, she's the one who makes the joy and kind of had everything running pretty well. Um, and now they're going to be riding. So we need to do a few things here. We need to turn back on the power in two different spots, and then we need to open up the main wall so the bombies can get in and stop the, you know, the riots going on and then get Tony Verloc out of his cage so we can tell him, hey, we need to do something about people starving together. Um, so this is also, like, one of the only unskippable cutscenes of the game. I don't know why. We can skip, like, every other one. But let's see if I can do this job. Jump here. Ah, I'm missing all the tricks today. So normally you can catch that edge right there. Otherwise, we have to do the walk of shame, which is going on all the way over here. It's not too big of a deal if we get spotted. Um, a big mechanic in this game is actually the fact that when you run past enemies, their detection meter, start, detection meter starts to fill. Um, it starts to fill, and then they look at you. They're like, hey, you're not supposed to be here. And then they finally react. So it takes them a couple of minutes to do so, or a couple of seconds, I should say. And during that time, you can run past them. Um, that is the case for almost every enemy in this game. All right, I'm going to really focus here. Very nice. nice jump. Nice job. So it doesn't really matter the angle that you're hitting these at. What matters is the distance. So how far away you actually are from them is going to depend on you getting it. 
Also, we're going to get our only upgrade of the game. We're going to get Strong Arm. That's going to make it so our whip consumes the stamina and we can use it later on during the fight. I'm also going to try and go for a skip here. I think my uh, this is my Got favorite it. trick in the game, by the way, coming up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so when you fall, it's actually slow even from a long height. But if you just whip right before you fall, you just completely skip the animation of falling down and you just immediately land. The joy um, makes her forget so that she uh, just shattered her legs. <laughs> Yeah, she's fine with it. It's all the joy it kind of helps out. So we're going to whip that guy a few times. Going to come over here, use that. And now the bombies are inside. And you can see it actually wasn't a riot. It was just a beautification effort. And, and as you can see, it's a very, very beautiful facility that we got right here. So now that we're done, we can go talk to Verloc. And the, it doesn't go exactly the way that Bing plans it to go. He's more of like, eh, just pop a joy and wait for it to be all over. It's not a big deal. Um, and this also does tip her luck off, though, that she is off her joy, which is a very bad thing in this society. You do not want to do that. So he's going to send um, doctors after us. And doctors are very helpful people, you know. Hey, look, it's the doctors. Um, you know. Don't worry about what they might have with them or anything like that. Don't don't mind their uh, their medical equipment that they're going to be using. But, um, those are some other enemies. They're a little bit more dangerous than the regular guys. But again, they have the same thing of you run past them, then they alert, and then they react to you, and then they try to hit you. So you have a lot of time to get past. Um, but now we are on curfew. So curfew, everybody's going to be trying to fight us. And we have a thing coming up right here that's probably the most dangerous area. We need to turn another wheel. However, it is polar detected while we have a lot of people chasing us. It's pretty much RNG as to whether or not we're going to die here. If we do, it's not a big deal. But we do want to try and get past this area as clean as possible. So let's see how this goes. Gonna come over here. We have a joy detector. I'm going to let my stamina refill just a little bit. Going to run past these guys. Uh, don't worry about all the flashing lights and the, you know, all this stuff going on. I'm going to grab this wheel and we're going to hope that we don't get hit as we try and get this up all the way. It's looking really good. And we got nice. it. Yes. Easy clap. The bush easy, is very good at easy. keeping you hidden. <laughs> Yeah, and along with that, sometimes they'll swing at you and they'll hit the bushes instead, which is very good for us because then they don't hit us. But um, sometimes you have like three or four bobbies right there and a doctor trying to murder you. If you get hit, it's not a big deal. You just go back to a checkpoint and then it's actually kind of safer because you don't have any alerts on you. But um, yeah, so now what we're doing, what we're doing right now is we're heading to the Waterworks treatment. Um, they actually put the joy, or no, I'm sorry, we're heading into the mood boost uh, detector. So instead of having telephone booths, what they do is they have um, these booths which actually dispense joy to the populace. So you just walk in there, you get a free thing of joy, you're happy, and you're all good to go. Uh, we're going to stop that because we don't want the mood booths to be filled anymore. We don't want people to I be taking their joy. I mean, so, they're like eating rats and leaves with the joy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and the thing is about the joy that makes it very scary is it's kind of that fantasy horror concept where even though they're eating rats, they don't actually know that they're eating rats. They just think that it's like cake or something or, or you know, a nice crumpet. I, I don't know. I, I think it's like a pinata in the beginning of the game. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, they're matching a pinata with all the candy inside and it turns out it's actually a rat. So it's a very, very bad thing. But now we have destroyed all the uh, mood booth allocators, and that means that we can actually um, basically get out of there. And then we kind of realize, wait a minute, the joy is in the water. So now we need to go to the water treatment facility and stop the joy from being pumped into the water so people can't just go home and make tea with it. Because that's a very British thing to do with your joy. But um, also, we're totally okay now. Nobody's gonna try and do attack us. They're just like totally fine and just like, oh, hey, Victoria, how you doing? Nice, lovely day for it, Miss Bing. But um, coming up right here, we're just gonna be walking over safely to the water treatment facility. So now is a good time for donations. Excellent. All right. So we've got a $100 donation from Lucigen, who says, thrilled to see demonic robots bringing this game to GDQ this crazy summer. Good luck and enjoy the run. And then we've got a $10 donation from Tainted Tally, who then says, So excited to see demonic robots running We Happy Few on GDQ. Best of luck on the run, and don't forget to take your joy. And all that accomplishment.
And then we've got a $50 donation from McJazz Hands, who says, It's been a heckin' crazy year, but it's good to know that GDQ remains constant. Good luck, runners, commentators, and tech staff. Have fun. And then we've got... One more. One more? All right. Yes. And then we've got a $25 donation from Canvas Code, who says, Every one of you, stay safe, and mad respect to GDQ. Awesome. So we still have those TVs right there. They don't like us very much, so we're going to be trying to avoid them. But uh, Mirror's Edge fans, I got some really good news for you. If you have played Mirror's Edge, you are going to really like this upcoming level. I really like the DLCs for this game because they're very different from the actual main game. These are much more linear, shorter stories that are much more concise and have very, very good mechanics to them. And it's really nice because you can see the inspirations that they actually take from other games, and it's really, really good. So we're gonna come right there. If you ever see me whipping before I'm falling, that's actually an animation cancel. Even from small heights, Victoria likes to do kind of a stumble and like kind of falls over. Um, we whip though, and that skips the animation entirely. Sometimes it's faster, sometimes it's not. It really just kind of depends on the area. But we're gonna come right here. We're sneaking inside because we don't actually want anybody to know that we're at the waterworks. Um, so we're gonna do some very stealth gameplay here, uh, rivaling the levels of Metal Gear Solid in the sense that we're gonna run past literally everybody and no one's going to bother us whatsoever. But we're gonna I feel like right the, uh, the the whole thing that they forget five seconds after because of the joy really plays into the stealth sections here. Yeah, it's not a bug, it's a feature. A and, bug, yeah. and in that case, it's legitimate. But yeah, so if you played Mirror's Edge, you, you're gonna recognize this area. You, you can tell where they drew their inspiration from. But now we're coming up to the big, big fight of the game, quote unquote. Uh, this is the area where it's, we're gonna have a lot of bad guys trying to come after us. Essentially, we're gonna be whipping them in a very specific order. We don't want them to kind of get anywhere near us. And enemies with different weapons have different like abilities. So for example, that type guy, he's gonna do a lot more damage than that wrench guy, and he's gonna be a lot more aggressive. I don't exactly know why, but that's just kind of how it works. Also, when you kill off one wave, the other wave spawns. So we kind of want to do this to where we want them to spawn in like the best way we can. And we want to stay over on this side because we need to get on one of these moving platforms and it goes up after. So we don't want to be too far away from it. Otherwise, we got to do some extra work in order to do so. Let me get this guy out of the way. Come on, man. There we go. And then we got one last guy. He's just going to chill there. Hey, buddy. Just going to keep him still and, you know, give him a nice little love tap. And there we go. Now we got some uh, more parkour coming up. I wonder how long they're waiting in those boxes. Yeah, Forever, there's no, Yeah, there's no room either, so they must have been there before the fight started because <laughs> they don't actually have a door on the other side. Yeah, they're just chilling in there, taking their joy, probably having a great time. <laughs> we don't even know. They're stuck in a box. Like, what if yeah, you well, didn't come to the waterworks, though? What if you just decided, eh, we're good? <laughs> Be there forever. Just in case, you know, you never know. <laughs> All right, so now we have some moving platforms that we got to get by, and this is the heavy parkour spot of the game. We're going to be having a little trick right here. So like I said, the coils, it doesn't really matter what angle you grab them from. It's more based on distance. So hopefully I get this first try. But, um, we, you know, the normal path is you have to go all the way around this way. You have to loop all around. I don't even remember how to do it normally. So we're just going to do it the, uh, the speedrunner way. Very there nice. There we go. Nice. I want to say it's like what, 15 seconds of time save? Probably, yeah. Maybe even a little bit more. Um, this one is a lot less scary. And that's about five seconds of time save. But we are now out of the Joy facility. Um, and there's going to be chaos in the streets. People don't really like being off of Joy. Um, as you saw in the very beginning, there's some very bad side effects, but it is needed if they want to continue on as a society and not die out. Um, the problem is there's going to be a little bit of a adjustment period, we'll say, um, in the sense that there's a lot of fighting going on, a lot of bad things, a lot of Joy detectors freaking out and shocking everyone. Overall, it's a very interesting scenario that's going to be going on right now. But we're just going to run past it because Victoria just wants to go home and sleep it off. You know, everyone's kind of been in that situation where they're just like, yeah, I just destroyed a water treatment facility, but I'm kind of tired. I want to go for a quick nap. So that's Long what we're day. going to be trying to do here. Long day. Sometimes you got to get some rest after, you know? It's important. Exactly. You can't ruin dystopian societies every day. No, she's actually gotten a lot done though, you know, but um, unfortunately she doesn't make it back home. She does get captured by the bombies and thrown into prison. So now we have the prison heist part of the game. Uh, but first she, she does have to sleep it off. You know, it's hard work trying to, uh, to save the world. You need you eight hours if you're going to ruin 
the side. I like how the big prison break is they just let the door open. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very good. Um, but we're going to run into Johnny Bolton here. Johnny Bolton isn't a very big fan of us, but to be fair, we were really mean on our joy. Like, let me tell you guys, Victoria was kind of the meanest person ever. Um, but he basically says, like, hey, um, I might have accidentally planted, you know, explosives in your house. Um, you know, no big deal. And so Victoria thinks, hey, instead of blowing up my house, why don't we use that to blow up the Troy treatment facility? So that's what we're going to be doing for. Also, this is the only time we use this. There's a little shove we can <laughs> to get that guy out of the way. Just a little push. We don't need to, you know, just, fight him or anything like that. Just wow, like, just hey, bullied. I gotta go get my things. <laughs> just bullied him, dude. What the heck? We had to do yeah. it. He's wearing glasses. <laughs> Fair, yeah. True. All right. We're going to come over this way. Trigger a cutscene. The red bobbies are... Uh, when you're fighting them, they're different. But when you're running past them and trying to go fast, they don't really do too much. But here we go. Now that we have all of our things back, we can just open these up. Come over here. And we're not out of the woods just yet, but we are in a pretty good spot. So we're going to head over here. And now we are heading back to the Joy Treatment Facility. That is the area that we were in earlier um, where we were uh, getting rid, you know, helping with the beautification efforts. But um, this is not a very beautiful part of the game. Uh, again, you know, very dystopian society. Going to do a little skip there, though. And we're going to come right down here again. We're just trying to avoid the um, the lasers and the TVs. They don't really do that much damage. I'm not too worried about, like, dying to them, but I'm more worried about getting stunned by them. And that's a bad thing, because uh, that will keep us down. So we're going to head over here. And right now, our goal is to head back home and get all the explosives that that person planted in. And fun fact, those, that guy is actually uh, part of the side quests for the main game. But uh, here we go. This is the worst part of the game. This is the infected alley. So I've been mentioning how when you run past the enemies, they have kind of a reaction to you. The, they like look, they get alerted, and then they attack. These guys are different. They will attack immediately, and they're extremely aggressive. I mean, you saw that right there. Look how far they followed me down. If I didn't whip these guys, they would immediately hit me as I was passing by. They're probably the most dangerous enemies in the game. And I can't imagine what this run would be like if all of the enemies were like this. Because they will completely ruin your run and lunge at you from a super far distance. It's also kind of uh, weird because they have like a fire damage sort of thing. Where like it ticks over time after they hit you. Yeah, I think it's because like they're infecting you with the, with the plague. Um, There's that which, smelly that it actually yeah. physically hurts you over time when they get close to you. Exactly, they're pretty bad, but thankfully that's the only big part with them. But here we go, this is Victoria Bing's house. Um, if you play the main game, you're kind of familiar with this location. Um, this is where Ollie Starkey... <laughs> uh, they're awful at their jobs security, they just let you run past them. Yeah, you ran through both of them looking across each other. Like, it's oh, uh, it's part of joy. It, it, it's what they're brands. looking for. It's a mechanic. And we're just gonna, you know, give that guy a couple of love taps. Again, he's totally fine with us. Oh, excuse me, buddy. Thank you for opening the door, though. But uh, now that we got the explosives, we just need the plans to figure out where to put the explosives in the Joy Treatment Facility in order to destroy it properly. Gonna reload my little dart gun right here. There we go. This area is kind of cool. Um, it has some good movement mechanics, so we're gonna be a little bit careful to avoid everything. But this area is actually where I was worried about dying earlier. Uh, this is where we turn the wheel, but it's a little bit different. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be coming up here. Excuse me, everybody. Hopefully I won't get shocked. If I do, it's not a big deal, but I'm going to try and get the skip. Hit that right there. Awesome. So if you open a window, you can immediately go through it, and you skip getting shocked by that thing, which is very good. Right. So I want to be careful here. Um, up this upcoming area, there's something bad that can happen. I'm not going to mention it because I don't want to jinx the run. Uh, but it's a marathon luck, so it might happen. If it does, then we should be fine. I have a backup for it. But it'd be better if it didn't happen. Very nice electricity dodges, by the way. Yeah, those are scary because you can get stuck in those and just take constant damage if you start freaking out the best at the worst time. But we're good. So normally the game can soft lock there. I was very worried about that, but thankfully it didn't happen. We can have a clap for that. Yeah, woohoo. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna place the explosives. Verluck is trying to stomp us from doing it. Victoria was a huge, like, prominent member of the society, so she was, like, totally down for a lot of this when she was on her joy. Verluck is not on his joy, kind of. 
but he still wants everybody to be on. He's not a very good guy. But here we go. We're going to set the explosives. And what would it be a better ending than everything blowing up? So now we have a, oh, I'll say this in the words of life, a classic Capcom escape sequence. <laughs> One might say uh, it's all falling down. It is. <laughs> Got oh another God, uh, really tricky one right there. It makes sense. Now I just need to climb to the top of here. Got a few more uh, little coils that we can climb onto. Oh no. That's a good thing that, you know, these are have conveniently placed yellow rope things that our whip can grab onto. Yeah, unfortunate scripted cinematic. That would have been bad if there were no rope. <laughs> I feel like, is she the only person who has this whip, or are there like other workers who set these up expecting this? She is the only one. I don't know why. Maybe they use it for, you know, as a pulley levy system. Uh, I mean, we've already decided that Joy can make you do some very weird things, and I'm just going to attain everything to that. Oh also, have a, kind of a scary skip to get through there, right in the middle of all of these explosions. Fun stuff, fun stuff. Gonna grab this last one. And we're heading towards the end here. This is kind of the finale of the entire game. But, you know, it's a great way to end it. Just everything blowing up and exploding, getting rid of all the joy, and hopefully allowing uh, England to kind of better itself in the future outside this distant society. Yeah. All right, let's hopefully. see if I get the jump. This, oh. this is the last kind of one here. Let's see if I can get it. And very nice. Good. Very nice. All right. Just got to run here, get one last explosion, and then we can kind of see that, you know, it's, again, the Dark Knight. You know, some bad things are happening. Become He's become Destroy death destroyer of worlds. But um, that is going to be the end of We All Fall Down. Uh, Ecdyces, one of you, thank you for joining me on to this. Uh, I appreciate it. I hope everyone's doing super well. And um, thank you, GDQ, for having me around. Uh, we're going to come right here. Time is going to end when we hit this. And time. GG, dude. Right, well done. Awesome. Before you go, I want to read you this donation, though, because you had a $200 donation from Compulsion oh, Games, who said, thank you for speedrunning our game. Lovely. Thank you very much for making this game. Um, before we go, though, I, I got some got good news for you guys. You guys have been awesome, and I, I cleared this with tech to make sure it was okay. But um, we're actually going to be doing another run. That's right. We're going to be doing an any percent <laughs> run of the main game. So you're probably wondering, well, there has to be some insane tech here. It, it, it's literally the best speed run ever because, you know, when it comes to video games and speed running, uh, we really just want to go fast and beat the game as quick as possible. So um, I'm not sure if tech ready. is going to be... Yeah, I'm not sure if tech is doing the timer. Um, if he is, then let me know and I'll, I'll wait to get that going. Also, I should mention, uh, if anyone wants to get into speedrunning, this is a great category to start on. It's very easy. Yes. yes, you can do this at home at any time as long as you have the game. But um, if we're ready to get started here. Would you like to tell them the category first? Yes, any percent. Bad ending. <laughs> but yeah. Are we uh, ready to go? All right. Three, two, one, go. So you're probably wondering, what do we do, got to do here to get the credits? Well, we're playing as Arthur, who is a newspaper artist, and he hasn't taken his joy yet. So we're just going to help him out in time. Right. Happiness <laughs> is a choice. Happiness is a choice. It is. Look right here. Don't have to worry about all those sad things in the past. We're just going to go right here, and that's going to be the credits of We Happy Few. So that was the any percent game. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will hopefully see you another time. Again, thank you, Dicey's and Waifu, and thank you, Tech, for doing all this work online and making this yeah. amazing event for Thanks us. Thanks, for, for having us. If you haven't, you should definitely go follow Demonic Robots. He does a lot of really awesome speedruns as well. A lot of good stuff. <laughs> thank you. Have a good one. All right, and I've got a couple of donations to read. Steve donates $75 and says, glad to see we happy few being run. Uh, I've got a donation for $5 from Piccolo, who says, can we get a late night $5 train going? All aboard. Can we, chat? Uh, and then I've got a $10 donation from VYC, who says, 
Congratulations to everyone who's pulled together this marathon. I'm sure it took a tremendous amount of organizing. You're all bringing relief to those of us on lockdown so we can bring relief to Doctors Without Borders. Thank you to all the participants and technicians for donating your time. And then we've got a, another donation from Cardana for $100, who says, Hi folks, I want to say thank you for running this uh, even year after year. With the current pandemic sweeping the world, we tend to take things for granted. I work in care and have seen the effects firsthand. Games at events like this really give us the chance to take a step back. Thank you so much to runners, event organizers, tech, and of course, you at home donating, keeping our world alive. Much love, Cardana. Aw, and thank you. Thank you all for watching. Um, we've got another donation for $15 from Opaque Dreamer, who says, thanks for putting on SGDQ despite the pandemic. These marathons are a treat every time they come around. And a $20 donation from Abekin, who says, much love to GDQ and all the runners for making this marathon happen. Excited to follow at home. Hype! And then we've got a $25 donation from Jade Anhinga, who says, love MSF, love GDQ, and love you gamers out there. Let's keep this up. And you know what? This is a great moment to be reminded of why we're here. We are here for Doctors Without Borders, who are an international medical humanitarian aid organization that works in over 70 countries around the world, providing life-saving medical humanitarian care and speaking out about what they see in those areas. Their work aids people so based solely on need, irrespective of race, religion, gender, or political affiliation. MSF is committed to safeguarding their patients' right to autonomy, confidentiality, and informed consent. 90% of their staff is national, meaning that they live locally and are from the country that they work in. MSF relies mainly on the generosity of individual donors with over 90% of MSF's income coming from private donors giving small amounts. So what you all are doing here tonight means a lot. And now we've got a short Twitch ad. online. Sadly, this is it for me for this SGDQ, but I've had a heck of a time with you. Stay cute, chat, 
and I'm going to hand it over to Buttered Noodles, a very, very capable host. And uh, we have some great games coming up for you uh, in this next block or so. The first of which will be Miami Vice uh, run by KZ Fru, and we have hit our incentive goal of cutscene percent. Um, so in addition to some awesome speed running, we will also getting, uh, be getting some amazing cutscenes, which I'm sure are of the highest quality. And before we head into the run, we do have a few donations to read out. We have a $10 donation from Vic saying, congratulations to everyone who's pulled together this marathon. I'm sure it took a tremendous amount of organizing. You're all bringing relief to those of us on lockdown so we can bring relief to Doctors Without Borders. Thank you to all the participants and technicians for donating your time. And we also have a $100 donation from Kirdana saying, Hi, folks. I wanted to say thank you for running this event year after year. With the current pandemic sweeping the world, we tend to take the little things for granted. I work in care and, and have seen the efforts firsthand. Games and events like this really give us the chance to take a step back. Thank you so much to the runners, event organizers, tech, and of course, you at home donating and keeping our world alive. Much love. And we've got a $25 donation from Fabio saying, with the world as it is, it is nice that GDQ is a constant source of joy and fun throughout these times. Keep up the good work, guys. And we have a $20 donation from Abakin saying much love to GDQ and all the runners for making this marathon happen. Excited to follow along at home. Hype! And we have a $15 donation from Opaque Dreamer saying thanks for putting on SGDQ despite the pandemic. These marathons are a treat every time they come around. And with that, I think we're ready for our run of Miami Vice with KZ Fru. Take it away. 